Um, excited to be here um, at Big Ten Media Day. It's always great to uh, get a, get uh, get started here. Uh, it's such a phenomenal league, and the uh, conference race is always such an exciting thing, not only for uh, the players and the coaches, but the universities, the fan base. It's a, just a phenomenal thing to be a part of. So to be here today as it gets kicked off, it's always it's always uh, good to be here and uh, excited to uh, get back to our team later here in the week as we continue to keep preparing to uh, you know, build this group and um, you know, approach the season with uh, a lot of optimism. Thank you, Coach. We will open the floor for questions. Stop on guys from Indianapolis Star. Uh, coach, having been a player yourself and now coaching one of the biggest brands in college basketball, I mean, what's your thoughts on the California build? Well, I mean, there's a lot of different opinions out there um, from you know, obviously university leaders, administrators, um, you know, long tenured coaches to you know, the college student athletes themselves. I think there's a lot that's going to go into it. There's a lot of unanswered, um, you know, questions. I think the, the big thing is that. In today's day and age, if you're not evolving, if you're not forward thinking, um, you're standing in cement, so to speak. You know, the days of what was once always the way to do things are good in 2020 maybe isn't the way to do it. And I think that um, you know, there's a lot of bright people in a lot of rooms that are going to get together and make the best decisions possible, you know, hopefully. And number one is to take care of the student athletes in the best way possible protect the game, protect the universities, and, and to continue on with the unbelievable product. I mean, I, I think that's, that's step one. And, uh, you know, if you can make a, a young kid, a student athlete's life, you know, a lot better, if they have the ability to take advantage of it, and we should be able to do that at some point. Um, but it also has to be consideration for you know, the overall good of the game, the overall good of collegiate sports, and, and the universities in general. So. There's a lot that goes into it. Me, in particular, you know, I was a student athlete. I know what it's like to play. I know what it's like to, you know, play on TV and get all the perks that go along with, you know, having your face out there and all that stuff. And I think in my time, I never probably realized, you know, who actually made money, you know, on those names, on those faces, you know, on those games, jerseys, newspapers. I never really thought of it that way. Now, it's a different age. You know, it's a different time. So there's a lot more to to, to think about when it goes into it. But um, you know, I think there's a lot of smart people in a lot of rooms, and, and hopefully at, at, the, at the front end, it's, it's about the players, it's about the student athletes, do what's best for them, and then we'll move forward and let's keep the game going in, in a positive direction. Jim Rabin, that's the exact same morning, Coach. Morning. Uh, as far as your front line goes, the options you have with the number of guys, six, seven, and taller. How do you approach that? Do you sort of have an idea of when, okay, these are going to be our main guys starting out, we're going to work other guys in, is he going to be over competition for a while? How do you want to maximize what you have up front? Well, that's a good question. You know, I think the strength of our team and some of the experience level of our team and talent, um, you know, it, it really starts on paper with the size and the ability to, you know, hopefully play an inside game. Uh, we have a lot of different guys that I think can play together. That's exciting. And I do think we have a lot of different guys that are able to contribute, whether that be a freshman or whether that be a fifth-year senior, fourth-year senior, whatever it may be. We have a lot of guys that expect to play. Our staff expects them to play. So I think one competition, you know, earn everything is always the best way to do it. That's always how we've done it. And I think there's great competition level to get on the floor and to play minutes. I think the second thing is to play a lot of guys. You know, for us to be able to maximize our talent, for us to be able to maximize our production, we have to get a lot of different type of contributions. And like I said, when you have a stable of guys, you have to have the ability to use them. You can't play just one or two and say this is how we're going to do it. You have to have versatility in your lineups. You have to have competition and give guys the rope to get out there and play. And I think you know, with with what we got going on, you know, right now, I like it. I think. That you know, there's a group that should take some pride in us having one of the best front lines in college basketball. And, uh, you know, that adds in, you know, even the Denise Andersons and the Jerome Hunters of the world who are six, seven plus. And, you know, Jerome, quite frankly, is, you know, every bit as big as Justin Smith. You know, so we have a, a big, strong, long group that, in my opinion, has some versatility. And we've got to get the most out of it by having them challenge each other every day. But without question, I think that's definitely something we have to find and make that a strength. 
Coach Tom Roos, SportsIllustrated.com. Trace uh, Jackson Davis has been mentioned on a few preseason freshman uh, player of the year type lists. Uh, can you talk a little bit about incorporating freshmen into your team and what you may have learned about that in the past few years here at Indiana? Well, whether you're in Indiana or you're anywhere, uh, young people take different paths to the floor. Um, we've always played freshmen, our staff has, we've played freshmen here in our first two years, whether that be Al Durham or Justin Smith, as, as true freshmen played. Last year's crew had a number of guys step in, with, you know, Robert obviously coming back as a sophomore, playing a lot of minutes. This year's team will be no different. Our two freshmen, true freshmen, Trace and, and his counterpart there, Armand Franklin, both have been uh, fantastic since they've stepped foot on campus in terms of their ability to do what we've asked them to do, fit in, and uh, be productive. And I think through our first couple workouts here, looking at things, I think both guys have a chance to really impact our team. Obviously, you know, Trace coming in, being a McDonald's All-American, there's a lot around him in terms of uh, accolades and height, but right now he's been very, very humble in the way that he's worked and the way that he's fit in. Very, very proud of him and Armand and both the way that they've approached things. They've been as good as any player on our team in terms of our fall camp and what we're doing. Now there's a lot of learning. There's going to be a lot of strength and, and weaknesses about the grind of college basketball, playing in games for the first time, playing against older players, scouting, all that stuff goes in. But both those guys not only have to contribute, but they can impact our team. And I think that's an exciting thing for us is to keep recruiting young players that you know, obviously we're bringing in to play right away. And AP. Um, getting back to the California law, um, is it fair to say that you think it's an issue that needs to be settled on a national level and not on a state-by-state -state case? That could be a little bit bigger than, than me. You know, I'm, I'm not as well versed, to be honest with you, in exactly what the pros and cons, the ramifications of each state to state, each university to university. But I would say this, when you're dealing with collegiate sports, or specifically us, the men's basketball, what you'd like is for everyone to have an equal say and obviously have their opportunity. But it definitely, probably, you know, however it's going to work out for the good of the game needs to be governed, needs to be looked at as a whole wholesale thing, not as an individual thing. But uh, again, I'm probably not as well versed to be that educated right now on the grand specifics of how each state handles it, what the NCAA is able to do. We've got a while to figure it out. And I know the fact that it's, it's on the forefront right now means there's going to be some really, really important people to the college game in terms of administrators, presidents, commissioners. Uh, they're going to have their say. They're going to you know, do, the, do the best they can to help you know, everyone. Hey, Coach Kyle Babcock, Sports Sports Media. You brought up Demisi. Um, we covered Demisi in high school. He didn't get a lot of playing time as a freshman. He was a superstar in high school. What's it like for him now to know that it's his time to get on the court and really shine? Well, Demisi's like a lot of young guys. They come from certain situations and they walk into you know uncharted territory. You got to learn the ropes. I think the great thing about Demisi is he's a fantastic kid. He wants to learn, very coachable. And just in his communication in this off season and what we try to do with him, he'd be the first to tell you that he had a lot to learn. And there's some things that he needs to do better. But I'll tell you what, he wants to work on it. And um, right now he's as, he's as big and strong and as, as well conditioned as he's been. You know, he's a 6'6", 220 plus pound guy. He can shoot the ball for us. He's gonna have to bring that to the table for our team. But, you know, for him, more importantly, and watching him as a sophomore, it's just a much different feeling for him. It's not the first time he's went through it. He has now the, uh, the advantage of going through a year under his belt. He knows what we expect of him. He kind of knows right now what he's going to need to do to help our team. And I think everyone from players to coaches feel that he's going to do that. And, uh, you know, we're excited for him. But uh, he has an opportunity, you know, right now to really grab a hold of a role. And, He's got to do some things better than he did in year one, but I think he's much more equipped mentally to do that more than anything, which is what you want from your young players, to grow and, and to keep getting better. But it means he's done a great job as we finished last year and as we've entered into this October of having a good way about him. And, you know, just in watching him practice even yesterday, he's a much different player. He's a much different guy out there than he was as a young player, as a, as a true freshman. Coach, love the jacket. Thank you very much. Thank you.